Thomas? And he was like, wait, and then I was like, is it, is it Thomas? And he was like, no, it's Violet. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man. And I was like, oh, crap, my bad. Like, that's where you know. Oh, that's where you know. He was like, it's okay, yeah. I think he's still listening from last year. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Whew, it's too hot out there to be doing that. It is too hot. Did someone pull it? Do you know? Well, legally, we only have to do one a, uh, one a month. And so we already did ours for the month. So yeah, it must have been someone pulled it or there was just a malfunction. It's too hot. gonna get started here in just a moment but you guys will need a blank piece of paper for number eight and a blank piece of paper for number nine <coughs> two separate ones so while we wait to make sure everyone's back you want to get those two things out eight I actually meant for us to do last class but we didn't quite have enough time So let's get uh, refocused here pretty quickly because I was not intending for you to have much homework, but that might have added five or ten minutes to what we've got to do here. So a uh, number eight, what I want us to do is I want us to practice constructing a unit circle, but one part of it at a time so that if something's wrong, um, you don't have to go back and fix a ton of it. And so we'll talk about why the unit circle is so important in this section. And then the book assignment is, the majority of it is over those question types. So I'm going to ask that you get as far through that as you can. And of course, I'll help you out as much as I can while you're here. Um, but you'll probably have a few questions that you need to finish up for homework. So finishing nine will be your homework between now and Monday. This is a B week, so this is the last time I see you guys this week. Okay, so to start off our unit circle here, Again, just make a big circle on handout, your piece of paper, number eight. Put your name on it, number it is eight, please. Let's first just start off with the degrees. Of course, if your angle doesn't open up at all, it's zero degrees. And unit circle, we really only focus on three angles per quadrant. And <clears throat> how many degrees is it right here at this first little dot? 31. Okay, this is 30. And now what I want you to do for all of the rest of these is just write in how many degrees you think that is. You don't have to go past that yet. Just fill in all of the degree locations. So of course, of the biggest, or when we talk about a unit circle question, the first part is trying to identify the correct location. If you need to know the tangent of 30 degrees, 
but you don't know where 30 degrees is, then you're not going to get that question right unless it's just an accident. longer for that part. Okay, so each of these big jumps was 30 degrees. How much was each of the small jumps? 15. Okay, so just make sure you got 45, 60, big jump is 90, big jump is 90, small jump is 15. And then of course some of these are ones you should feel comfortable with. Like I hope you know halfway around is 180. That just kind of tells you you're on the right track. At 30, then 15, then 15, then 30. And at the end, we should end up with what? All right, should end up with 360, so that confirms that. Okay, so if we needed to find a spot for the unit circle in degrees, at least mentally, this is the process you should go through. If not, just physically draw this. But we also need to be able to find angles in radians. So if your angle doesn't open up at all, that's zero radians. How many radians is it right here? Pi over six. That's pi over six. And how many here? Pi over what? Four. Four, good. I think those two are worth memorizing, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But I want you to try to write the radian measure for all of the rest of them. Now, I will side note for just a second. If you forget why pi over 6 and 30 degrees are the same thing, what we did in section 4.1 and converting, I mean, it's kind of a pain to jump through those steps, but you should always be able to figure out that pi over 6 is the same thing as 30 with that unit conversion that we've done. So. All right, so take just a moment and do your best to name all of the angles and radians, or at least make your best guess. Let's go through and fill these out. I realize some of you are still working and that's okay, but just because you even know these, we can still aim to be a little bit more efficient here. So the reason why I said I think it's helpful to know how much one pi over six is, if you know how big one pi over six is, you can add that again to get to two pi over six, and then three pi over six, and four pi over six, and five pi over six, and 6 pi over 6. You just reduce those fractions anytime you can. And then you can keep going. 7 pi over 6. Add it again to get to 8 pi over 6. Add it again for 9 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. And in the end we should end up with what? Which is the same thing as 12 pi over 6, right? 
So if you know how big 1 pi over 6 is, you can just count that distance until you land where you want to. That's why I think it's helpful to know this one. You can see I got almost all of them. The only other ones that you missed are the ones in the middle. But again, if you memorize this one more, pi over 4, I try not to make y'all memorize more than you have to, but if you know how big 1 pi over 4 is, oh, this is wrong by the way. It should be pi over 2. It's a sloppy 2. If you know how much 1 pi over 4 is, you can add it again to get 2 pi over 4, reduce it, add it again, 3 pi over 4, add it again, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4. I reduced where I could, and some of those I already had, but it confirmed that I had those correctly. So, unit circle questions can be in degrees or they can be in radians. In all unit circle questions, that's always the first step, find the right location. So, is everybody okay with how I got these degrees and these radians? Just want to give a chance for you all to speak up. Again, we're going to use this all semester, so. Okay, the next challenge in the unit circle is once you find the location, you have to know the point at each of those. Okay, so what do you think the point is here? I heard something over two. Did you say square root of three? Square root of three over two, and then the y value is one half. Now you can just straight up memorize that or you can think about these lengths. This is the biggest of the x lengths. Square root of three over two had the biggest decimal. That's what we looked at last class. And then it has the smallest of the y lengths. One half had the smallest of those decimals. So thinking of those decimals might be able to help you. Now, there are three other points that have almost the exact same point. What is one of those that's almost identical to this? Y'all have to speak up, please. Okay, 150. So notice this distance x and this distance x are the same. So if you know this one square root of 3 over 2, this one is square root of 3 over 2. If this distance is 1 half, this distance is 1 half. The only difference is this one you're going right square root of 3 over 2, and this one you're going left square root of 3 over 2. X should be negative there. Okay, and then there's two others that have the same values. So let's knock those out. This one and this one. This guy has the same X length as this one. Same Y length, but down. At 210, it's got the same x length as 150. Same y length, but it's going down. So, in quadrant 3, they both should be negative. Quadrant 4, only y should be negative. But I'm purposely making all of these dots the same color. They're all red because they're all the same. Okay, in the middle of each quadrant, I'm going to color each of these purple. These are all almost the same. So if you memorize this one is square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2, then you can copy that over here. And then you just think about you're going left, which makes x negative. You're going left and down, which means x and y are negative. Or you're going right and down, which makes y negative. Okay, and then the last one, or the last of the ones that take real effort here, would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Try to color these dots black. They've got the smallest of the x links, which would be a half, and the biggest of the y links, which is square root of 3 over 2. So this is going to be the same, but in quadrant 2, x is negative, 
This is going to be the same, but in quadrant 3, they're both negative. And this one's going to be the same, but in quadrant 4, y is negative. So at the end of the day, I guess you can do just as well as everybody else memorizing those. But there's so much symmetry and pattern recognition there that you're really doing a lot more work than you have to. If you understand quadrant one, and then you understand how like this point and this point have the same x length and the same y length, that can help you see that they're the same point other than you're going left, which makes x negative. OK, we also got these points, though. It's just that these are the easier ones. If this is unit circle, if all of your distance is going straight right, that would be 1, 0. If all of it's going straight up, 0, 1. All directly to the left, and all directly down. Now, I want to add two things to this. And I do suggest that you guys emphasize, highlight, circle the parts that you don't feel like you know yet. It's OK to not know them yet, because it's not our quiz day. But you got to identify what parts you don't know before you can get there. Um, in our note, I want to make one connection to your notes last time. I compared five different values. And I think this will help you confirm. So of those five values, we said 0 was the smallest, 1 was the biggest, and then there was three ratios that we often use. What was the smallest of those? One half. And then a little bit bigger than that was? And a little bit bigger than that was? Okay, and a little bit bigger than that is one. Well, when I write it this way, look at how all this matches up. Let's look at the x values. Smallest x value. Next biggest x value, next biggest x value, next biggest x value, next biggest x value. The way those are in order are the way that these x values are in order. And then that makes sense because you're going from x equals 0 to a little bit bigger to a little bit bigger to a little bit bigger. Do you all see how those line up that way? But same thing with the y values. 0, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So. If you understand the relationship, like how these things compare to each other, then you can just reason through where the dots are. So, and you're memorizing last. Do you all understand why I'm saying I think that should help you with the memorizing? You just know where the point is? Okay. So, um, like our first few quizzes after the one we've already done, um, it's not that uncommon for a student to like just make an entire unit circle on the back of the quiz, and that's fine. But over time, this is what you need to do. And I just want you to have one example down of how this is supposed to be helpful to you. And I would like us to consider, let's try like, I want to come up with the hard one. How about cosecant of 5 pi over 4? So short of making an entire unit circle, you have to be able to figure out where 5 up pi over 4 lands. So I can do this mentally because I've worked so many thousand unit circle questions in my head. But you might make a quick little sketch and say, well, here's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. And as long as you can get that close enough to see that it's in the middle of this quadrant, that's going to give you a hint about the point there. And it's going left and down. If I was asking you the cosine of 5 pi over 4, here's your answer. If I was asking you the sine of 5 pi over 4, there's your answer. If it was tangent, we have to do sine divided by cosine. And then the other three are reciprocals. So do you all remember which one is the reciprocal of cosecant? Sine. So if you know the sine because you memorize that point, you can flip him over to get cosecant. And then sometimes you have to do this, sometimes you don't. In trigonometry, at least, <clears throat> having a square root in your denominator is considered unsimplified. So if you check your answer in the back of the book, it's never, ever, ever going to look like this. You need to multiply the top and the bottom by that. 
because then your denominator becomes a perfect square. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. So when we memorize those points, we're really memorizing sine and cosine, but you can use sine and cosine to find tangent, or you can flip sine to get cosecant, or you could flip cosine to get secant, or you could flip tangent to get cotangent. So really memorizing the, those points, you're indirectly memorizing all six trig functions for all of those important angles. So that is what we are going to move on in practice. But any immediate questions? Okay. Then on your second sheet of paper that you got, go ahead and number it as nine and jot the full assignment down to the top of the page. And I'm going to look at three of these with you. And then I'll give you like 10 minutes to try a few and see how it goes. So not a requirement, but I do su highly suggest that y'all write the entire assignment down on the top of the page so that you can cross off the questions as you do them. And then it's a little bit harder to miss that you skipped one or forgot one. But go ahead and copy that down. And then we'll look at the two vocab checks together and we'll look at the first question and then I'll let you try if you want your own. So once we do those couple together, in theory, you could just keep on going at your own pace the rest of class. But again, I will check in every 10, 15 minutes and help you out with the view. <clears throat> okay, anybody need the assignment written up there longer? It's fine if you do, I just don't know. Okay, then, Again, about 90% of this section is practicing using the unit circle. But first up, we've got vocab check one and three. I feel like you should probably know number one, but we can just do it together. Each real number T corresponds to a point X, Y on the blank blank. What are they looking for there? Okay. And then number three, I'd understand why you wouldn't know this one because it hasn't come up yet. The smallest number C for which a function is periodic is called the period of F. Now this is something that we use more and more as time goes on, but basically all period means in mathematics and specifically trig is like at zero, you have a sine of zero. And if you travel far enough, you eventually get a sine of zero again. And if you travel that far again, you get sine of zero again. And that same sine value just keeps coming up the more times you go around. So how far you have to travel is referred to as period. But that's what it's looking for. And just for y'all's knowledge, on vocab, I know some of them are usually pretty straightforward. And then some of them uh, we may not have talked about in the notes. But the vocab is always in the page or two before. And it's always exactly word for word. So. 
if you were not here in class and you didn't know what three was, you just have to scan the page before or two pages before and you'll find that exact sentence in there. So there's no reason to miss those. Okay, I think the next one is number seven, is that correct? So most of your questions are gonna be pretty similar to what I'm about to do. That's why I wanna do one more example with you. But number seven gives you an angle They don't tell you how big that angle is, but they tell you the point it lands at is negative four fifths, negative three fifths. And the question wants six answers. It wants to know what is the six trig functions of that angle. So what's the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of that angle. Now, this is optional, but suggested. I suggest that you line these two up, line these two up, and line these two up. Why do you think I suggest that? Right, this is supposed to be the reciprocal of this, this is supposed to be the reciprocal of this, and this is supposed to be the reciprocal of this. And if you write it that way every time, then you're just reinforcing what the reciprocals are, so that you know those. Now, there's one little catch to this question, um, which I don't think would make y'all miss this, but the answer to cosine is gonna be negative four fifths. How do I know that? Okay, it's the X, but technically, and this is where y'all need to be careful, technically X is only cosine and sine is what, or X is cosine, Y is sine, that's only true if you're talking about the unit circle, if this radius is one. So I wish they had told you to check this, but if you're going left four fifths and then down three fifths, you could do Pythagorean theorem. To see that it's the unit circle. That's the only way to know the radius is one. But you really shouldn't assume the radius is one. But now that we know it's unit circle, or we're talking about an angle on the unit circle, these ratios don't look familiar. But keep in mind, unit circle, we only memorize three spots in each quadrant. There's 360 degrees. So there's other angles on the unit circle that we just don't memorize. But cosine still comes from x. Sine still gives you y. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Remember, a reciprocal just means flip your fraction. So those take, honestly, about as long as it takes to write them down. Shouldn't take a lot of time. Uh, but based on my first period class, there's a little bit more hesitation with tangent. How are you supposed to know tangent from sine and cosine? Okay. So something called the quotient identity. Tangent of an angle is always sine over cosine. So we have to do this all the time. So you have to take sine divided by cosine, and you have to remember how to divide fractions. I think most of you learn this as keep, change, flip. Those are cancel, and so we end up with negative times negative is positive, so 3 fourths. You okay with where that's coming from? Sine divided by cosine, you have to divide your fractions usually. But if you've got tangent, cotangent's just a reciprocal of that. So flip them over and you've got that answer too. So same thing we are doing with the unit circle last class, at the end of last class, but this was not a spot we memorized, so, but we also were just told the point. Okay, so looking ahead, it looks like 9 and 11, 13, 15, 19, 23, 26, 29. All of those are just straight unit circle questions. Find the angle, get the point. Sometimes that's all it wants. Sometimes it wants you to use the point to find sine, cosine, tangent. 
Sometimes it wants you to use the point to find sine, cosine, tangent, <laughs> secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Just whatever the directions say. So I'm going to start walking around the room so that if you've got something holding you back from moving forward, I can help push you and help you get started. Otherwise, about 10 minutes from now, I will take questions on the board over the first couple.
They'll have it fixed by next week by the time y'all are back. Okay, just a few more minutes and then I will let you ask for some help on the first few. Don't forget that the odd answers are in the back of the book. You don't have to check every time you do a question, but you probably should at least check every couple. I don't want you to have to go back and redo a big chunk of your homework. So. Check every couple. Or have one person at your table take turns and uh, so that you're not all checking them as much or something like that is fine.
so that has been 10 minutes so if you've been checking your work and you're doing fine you can tune me out here you do not have to follow along but the first few questions were all odd 9 11 13 15 19 I don't know if you got that far but any of those that you've tried and you need some help on Any of those you want me to go over for you? Yes. 15? Sure. So I'm guessing you're asking about 15 because of the angles seems a little different. Negative pi over 6. Okay, with the tangent part? Okay. Well, for other people, at least in my first period, there was a few questions about where would negative pi over 6 be. So again, I don't want to make a unit circle every single question, but a quick little visual helps. So if you know how much you have to turn for 1 pi over 6, remember negative just means you go in the opposite direction. So here's the location. And then based on where it is, I can see it's the big x length square root of 3 over 2, small y length down, negative 1 half. And so if you just need cosine, it's the x value. If you just need sine, it's the y value. And if you need tangent, you're going to have to um, do some work here. You're going to have to do Tangent is always sine divided by cosine, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And then to multiply fractions, you multiply your numerators together to get your numerator, multiply your denominators together to get your denominator. You can at least reduce out these two, the twos, and you get down to this. But when you go to check this in the back of the book, this is not what the answer is going to look like because this is considered unsimplified. Anytime you have the square root in your denominator, you need to multiply the top and the bottom by that square root. And then across the top, you get negative square root of 3. Across the bottom, you get the square root of 9, but the square root of 9 is a perfect 3. Is that all you needed there? Uh, Luke, make sure that when you uh, go to the bathroom, you need to take the pass with you. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Okay, it's fine. She didn't know you were out, so she took it. So again, I know y'all didn't rationalize much in Algebra 2, but you're going to get a lot of answers that you think are wrong until you rationalize. So. Now, one other thing, just kind of a little trick to help out check your work when you don't have the back of the book to look at. Um, now, this is not okay for a quiz or a test. You guys should know that this is not okay when you're checking your answers because the back of the book doesn't have any decimals. But in theory, you can ask your calculator, hey, what is the tangent of negative pi over six? And it's going to say some weird decimal, and that weird decimal is not worth any points. I'm not interested in that unless it's a qu calculator question like number 43. When you get to 43, they ask you to use the calculator a few times. But what you can do is you can say, well, I did some work, and I think the answer is, I don't know. Let's say you thought the answer was square root of 2 over 2. These aren't the same thing, so there's no way that's the right answer. And if nothing else, you would know it to spend a little bit more time on it. I got negative square root of 3 over 3, which should be exactly even to what the calculator says. So the fact that my answer's decimal compared to the question's decimal, the fact that those two are the same, should give you confidence that you did it correctly. 
again, you guys have the back of the book today, so that's not really an issue, but it's just kind of a quick little strategy. Okay, that seemed like the only question y'all had, but is there maybe one more from the start of the assignment? About the first half of the assignment, it's all fairly similar, so if something's not working out for you, it's better to ask sooner rather than later. Let me give you, we're going to do 15 minutes this time. So try to get as many done as you can in 15 minutes, and then I'll stop and take some more questions on the board. Just that you may not memorize where 4 pi is. You're going to have to put some work into that. 
How many radians is right here? Okay, or zero. I was going to do this as such, but if this is zero radians, the here is how many? One pi. If you add it again, you get the two pi. If you add it again, you get the three pi. If you add it again, you get the four pi. So these are not the same angles, but they're coterminal. They land in the same spot. So what's the point here? Okay, and you want what? Sine? Yes. Then you want the y value. It just, when it says something about period in the direction, it just says sine can be zero. Zero, or pi, or two pi, or that value repeats. So you just have to keep going, but in the end you're trying to figure out where it lands on the unit circle. Know the point there, cosines of x times y. Anybody else need me to come look at your work to help you get unstuck? I'm going to also add that 37 through 42 will probably need to talk together about one day, but give them a show. But don't spend too long being stuck on those. We might just wait until next week. Thank you. 
Technically, that lands on the unit circle, but we pretend like we don't do that. Okay. So I'm going to say, I don't know how big T is, but I'm going to just try to sketch it to get my question. They told you that the sine is one half, and the sine is the y value. And they want to know what's the sine of negative. Well, this is how big T is. Oh, okay. Negative T is just going to be down here, right? And what would the sign here be? Yeah, however much you were going up, now how much you're going down.
Okay, as promised, it's been 15 minutes. So, uh, the next handful of questions, anything y'all tried, you want some help on? Yeah. 31. 31. Okay, 31's a good one. All right, so if you guys know you need help with 31, please pay attention. If you're not sure because you're not there yet, you should probably pay attention. I guess in theory you could watch the class video on my website later, but you might as well knock it out now. So if it wants sine, if this is a spot that lands on the unit circle, this is still a unit circle question. So all unit circle questions, you have to figure out where that angle is. So right here is zero radians. <clears throat> How many radians is it halfway around? One, one pi. Well, pi is about 3.14 and one is one, so a little bit different. Add that again, all the way around is two pi, right? Add it again, three pi. Add it again. That's how you can figure out where four pi is. And this is why the idea of coterminal angles came up in last section at the very beginning. There's a big difference between zero, not opening up at all, two pi, which you go all the way around once, and four pi, which you go all the way around twice. But at the end of the day, if you land on this spot and you have this spot memorized from the unit circle, that's still one zero. If you wanna know sine, it's still gonna be the y value. So it's a little bit harder to find four pi because you have to go around the circle more than once but it's still the y value on the unit circle. Yes. You said 29? Okay. Okay, so once again, another angle that lands on the unit circle. So we have to figure out where it lands. Know the point there. And for 29, it wants all six. I like to write all six out so I don't forget to do them all. Okay, so you have two ways about going to find this spot, and either one of them is fine. If you know how much of a turn it takes to get to positive pi over two, you can take that same amount of turn in the negative direction to get to negative pi over two. Or, just a different option, you could add a rotation to figure out that negative pi over two and three pi over two are coterminal. And again, coterminal is important because it means they land in the same spot. And then we have to know the point here on the unit circle. This would be zero, negative one. And now the rest of our answers are going to fall into place pretty quickly. That's the hard part. Cosines, the x value on the unit circle, zero. Sines, the y value on the unit circle, negative one. Flip over sine to get cosecant. Flip over cosine to get secant. But what happens when you try to flip over zero? Huh? Okay, undefined. I think that's what you said. Again, with the air off, I have to have this fan going. I just can't hear. I can't hear very well in the first place. But yeah, so if I try to flip this over, I've got division by zero, and we can't divide by zero. So that one's not possible. We could do sine divided by cosine to get tangent. But once again, you can't divide by zero. So that's undefined. And then this one, this is a very good one early in the year. Because if you know cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, that's good. But how are you supposed to flip over an undefined answer? Like that's, I mean, you're kind of stuck there. So if tangent is sine divided by cosine, then cotangent is the reciprocal of that. Cosine divided by sine. So he would be zero. Make sure you find the right spot. Have the point memorized from the unit circle. 
cosine x, sine is y, flip sine to get cosecant, flip cosine to get secant, sine divided by cosine to get tangent, flip tangent to get cotangent. Wanna? So period just tells us that it's going to repeat. So like right here at zero radians, this has a sign of zero, right? And if you add some distance, which is called its period, eventually you get sine of zero again. If you add that distance again, so at like two pi, you get sine of zero again. Add that distance again, you get sine of zero. Add that distance again, like 4 pi, you get 0. So period just means that it's repeating on a consistent basis. So you're just going around the circle twice to land here so that you can find the sign of that. It still just wants to know, well, for question 31, sorry. For 31, it wants sign. That's why I picked out the y. You just have to go around the circle more than once sometimes. Let me try to give you all a few more minutes and I'll take a couple more questions on the board. Again, with that fire drill, we're a little bit shorter on time. So I'm gonna give about five minutes where I just walk around and then I'll take a few more questions on the board and then we'll make sure you know where you need to be by this day. Those are the 
spots you memorize, but there's a bunch of other angles that are on the research that we don't want to Okay, so to make sure I had time to answer those last couple questions, if you have some, um, I have to start stop the timer quite a bit quicker here. So, is there one or two more that I can help with? Okay, you first. Okay, 48. It's a calculator question. Okay. Well, is this degrees or radians? Radians, because if it was degrees, it would have to say. It would have to have the symbol or the word. Okay, so since this is a calculator question, you need to make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Okay, and then cotangent, the reciprocal of what? Okay, so the easy way to do reciprocal, at least in your calculator, is to do one over tangent. One over tangent is the same thing as cotangent. The inner, and that's just telling you to round, so four decimal places in your channel. That's the only way to do secant, cosecant, and cotangent in your calculator, is to do one over their reciprocal. And you should have that in the notes if you need to check. All right, somebody else had another one? What you got? I say 41 for next week, because that's one that everyone's going to need to listen to. I don't want to rush that. Just skip it for now. Do I try it, or do I just have to go? Well, try it for 10 seconds, and then if you're not sure, then move on. Okay, I'll keep coming around, but we are down to about six minutes, so you probably should finish up the question you're on. I do need you to try the rest of these questions. Again, I realize 37 through 42, I told a lot of you to worry about next week. So try them for five or 10 seconds, and if you're not sure how to start them, that's fine. We've got time on Monday. But between now and next Monday is a long time, so you should certainly have time to finish those up for homework, so please do. And then when I see you on Monday, you should have them all attempted. You should have checked all the answers in the back of the book or with my videos online, and you should know which one you need some help with. So I need you to be there at the start of class next Monday. But for now, finish up what you're on. Update your planner that you've got a few questions of homework. And then you can start bringing back my calculators or putting your books back if you want. <laughs>